Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, Northrop Grumman's entry into the satellite servicing uh, business. I really liked uh, Mark's presentation because you're going to hear another pure commercial, uh, you know, talk about a conservative step-by-step -step approach, you know, to a new business area. Uh, we're not in orbit yet, but uh, early next year, our first mission extension vehicle which is the first vehicle in, we believe, a roadmap of satellite servicing uh, vehicles, will be in orbit and starting its, um, you know, starting its mission. So we took a very conservative approach for satellite uh, servicing. You know, satellite servicing means all kinds of different things to different people. And we thought the first and you know, the first and best way to start was mission extension. What I mean by, by that, you see the picture there, you have the host satellite, and the mission extension vehicle has uh, rendezvoused and docked to its apogee uh, nozzle, and it's just a mechanical interface. So literally we have a stinger that goes into the apogee motor, and it makes a tight uh, fit, so now we can control the host uh, spacecraft. So we can do various different services. The obvious is attitude control. We can take over the attitude control. Station keeping. We can do north, south, uh, east, west station keeping. We can move between slots. Um, we can do inclination pull downs for those geo satellites that have completely run out of uh, fuel and their inclination has started to uh, move. And we can move the host spacecraft uh, to a graveyard orbit if that was uh, that was desired. So we consider that really a conservative uh, first uh, step, but you know there's there's really going to be uh, more. If I can move on there. Um, you know, I've kind of already hit the the main points uh, here, but uh, we do this is a very capable system. We have enough propellant on board to service continuously different satellites. It could be one satellite for 15 years or a series of satellites over that uh, lifetime. And we've, we've uh, designed in enough propellant for that, that entire uh, lifetime. So that's part of the business model. The business model also includes being able to uh, either lease it or purchase it. In the uh, sort of our next step, because again, this really short talk is uh, also about where's the roadmap, where's the total business going. So our, our next step is a mission extension pod. And we've announced this at Satellite 2018, so um, this is out there. It's in design phase right now. And what we're trying to do is make something that's complementary to the very capable mission extension vehicle and kind of hit the lower end of the, uh, what we believe to be the satellite servicing uh, market. So what you're seeing there is a little self-contained propulsion element. It only has enough fuel for something on the order of five years capability. So that's why I say it's less capable, but it has a lower price point, thereby expanding the overall market for uh, satellite servicing. It's similar uh, to uh, the, bigger, the bigger brother that it attaches to the Apogee motor nozzle there and becomes part of the host satellite, so that's what you see uh, there. But it has a mothership to take it to the vicinity of the uh, host spacecraft, and there's multiple pods per mothership. So the mothership can go around and, and the geostationary arc and service multiple satellites, all with uh, pods. So we'll spread pods out over, over the entire geostationary arc. Once again, a broader, a broader uh, market uh, segment and being able to handle high and low uh, types of pricing. The other thing there, you see robotics. This will be the entrance of robotics into uh, the market. We think that's uh, very important. And just having a space-based robotics part of satellite servicing brings on other markets, like being able to jar loose uh, a stuck solar array or you know other things uh, like that. So. It's a, it's a business model that's very step-by-step uh, -step and uh, conservative. The, uh, the next 
uh, phase after that gets more into, uh, it's really probably farther out, and it gets more into actual manufacturing in space uh, with the robotics. I'm now on the sort of middle picture there. Um, with extensions of robotics in space, I think you're going to see in space assembly and repair. We've been working through some NASA funding on uh, the Talisman arm, which really can allow very large uh, structures to be built in uh, space. And uh, we're still looking at uh, refueling, um, although the, you know, to some extent, I think the pods uh, concept meets some of the needs of the refueling, maybe in a, in a better way. And then long term, we see these vehicles morphing into a space-to-space -space transportation system that's going to operate all within the area of Earth and out into cislunar space, and sort of the tug concept that people have always wanted to make a business case out of, but nobody's uh, quite uh, got there. So um, it's exciting times at uh, Northrop Grumman. As, as you all know, we started this as part of uh, Orbital ATK and uh, Northrop uh, bought Orbital ATK and all of that work moved into the innovation system sector. So we're really proud to be part of uh, North of Grumman. Gives us a lot more scale to build these types of uh, commercial businesses. And uh, it's exciting times and hopefully next year we can be here and have like movies and stuff of MEV number one actually uh, grappling to a host spacecraft and servicing it. So thank you very much.